In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to try to explain what is an AI agent. And it is also called as an autonomous agent. What is an agent that is powered by AI in fundamental powered by a large language model? If you believe 2025 is the year of agents, so the next 10 minutes is going to help you establish the baseline definition of what is an agent. So according to me, agents are the things that make LLMs take actions. If you were to think about LLMs, then you would think in terms of prompts and outputs. But if you were to translate that thought into a new paradigm, then you have to start thinking about tasks and action. So the agents are supposed to get some task and then the agents are supposed to take actions or executions. So instead of giving a prompt and then making an output, the way agents should ideally work, the way an autonomous agent should ideally work is that they should get tasks and then based on that, they should take action. And also there is a slight difference between a typical workflow and an agent. A typical workflow is completely designed by human being to design, okay, this happens first, this happens second, this happens third. But an agent is supposed to be more dynamic. That means irrespective of what the workflow human being has designed, the agents are supposed to mix and match and then do certain things. Now, if you were to think about agents, primarily what we call as agents are nothing but LLMs augmented. So LLMs with some kind of a tool is what we simply call as an agent. Fundamental version of an agent is LLM plus tool. And what kind of tools? Could be a calculator, could be a Python ripple, could be Wikipedia database, could be any APA, could be anything that you give like an internet search, image generation, whatever that you want to give as an augmented tool to an LLM. Now, how do you make it a really good agent, like a multi-agent system? So a simple agent is an LLM plus tool, but if you were to expand the universe of an agent, so there are certain things that you should take care and that should ultimately decide that you have got a really good, a solid multi-agent system. What are those things? First of all, I believe, this is again highly opinionated, I believe an agent should have memory capabilities. There should be some sort of memory layer, uh, whether that is a permanent memory or a temporary memory, but for at least given session, there should be a memory layer that uh, ultimately tells the agent what is happening. So the agent can anytime go to the memory and then try to understand what is happening, what has been stored, what can be retrieved. So there should be a memory layer there. The agent should have some kind of a planning capability. So if you were to go give a question, for example, do a research about, um, let's say, uh, Bitcoin pricing, then the agent should have some capability to first plan what are the set of things that it has to do, how many agents it has to summon and all those things. So it should have planning capability. With planning capability, as you might have very well guessed, you might be entering into multi-agent system where you've got more than one agent with more than one LLM with more than one tool. That's de technically a multi-agent system. There could be one agent with a tool, in this case, a Wikipedia. There could be another agent with a Google search. There could be another agent with a Python Ripple. There could be another agent with some kind of an APA, probably let's say a Coindesk APA or something. So this is how the multi-agent system should work. So far, we have seen two characteristics. One is memory. The second one is planning capability. The third one is the agent should have a very clearly defined role. What is the objective of the agent? Why does the agent exist? What is the purpose of this agent? This should be very clearly defined. For example, if I've got the internet search agent, I should give a clear goal and a role for the agent to accomplish any time there has been a task assigned. So based on that, there could be a task assigned to the agent. The same way if I've got a Python Ripple agent, there should be clear definition about why the agent should exist and what kind of goal it does it have. And finally, the most important thing is these agents should collaborate, cooperate for a clear, broader goal. So at the end of the day, what is the primary task that they have been given should be the ultimate North Star for these agents to work towards. And then these agents should manage and cooperate in such a way that it is always about the North Star, not necessarily like Facebook or big tech small teams work like a silos. So you don't want that to happen with agents that could die with human beings, but with agents, you need these agents to collaborate and cooperate really efficiently for you to drive them towards the common goal or the primary task for which you summoned these agents. So this is a very simple multi-agent system that I believe that should, uh, you know, an agent, typical agentic system should have. Now getting into 
the simplest workflow of how an agent could look like. So if you have got a human being like me or like you, hopefully you are a human, you make a question or a call. And when you make that, there should be an action happening in some kind of an environment. It could be a coding environment. It could be internet. It could be something. Now there could be a feedback coming from it. Like for example, like I said, if there is a question about asking something about, let's say Bitcoin, then uh, there should be a set of things, the actions or plans that should have been planned. There could be multiple agents working towards it. And when they do something, there should be always a feedback coming back to it saying whether it has been accomplished, not accomplished, more tasks should be done, something like that. And ultimately some kind of a stop should be there. So this could be like a very simple way of implementing an agent. How would you implement if you are doing it in code? If you were to not use any uh, agentic frameworks like crew AI, land graph or a um, PyOtogen. So typically you would have users sending a message. There is an LLM, there's a bunch of tools attached to the LLM and then a bunch of tools will also have some uh, retrieval element to it. The retrieval element will have some memory to it. And then it retrieves. There is an environment where safely gets executed, comes back, gives you everything. Finally, if everything is done or the, if, if the objective is done, then you stop it. Now, this is the final item. Um, if you were to expand this completely for one particular use case, let's take an example. This is an example where you have designed a coding agent or an agentic coding ID or like something like cursor. So the user human has gone ahead with a query. Okay. So the query is something like write a Python code that should uh, draw a bar chart using matplotlib. Now what should happen is like there is a UI, there is an interface layer application layer before even the LLM call. So that goes to that UI. Now what should happen is until the task is clear, what it has to do, what the agent has to do, there could be some back and forth, the clarifying component and the refining component can clarify some things to the LLM. The LLM could ask question and then refine it. So this back and forth exists. Now, if everything is done, you also send some context from the interface to the LLM. Why this is important, especially if you're working with an existing code base, there could be already something existing and that should ultimately drive what the newly written code is. So the context that retrieval, the memory component that I talked about, that should also go into the LLM call. Now with this, there is an environment at the environment. What does it do? It looks for files. It uh, returns the path just to make sure, you know, the CSV is in the right place. The file path is in the right place and all these things. It also should write some internal unit test so that whatever that we have tried to do, like maybe a bar chart is actually being a bar chart. The CSV is in the right place. We're not facing any errors. We are not just throwing some random stack overflow code, rather the code that should work completely in the given environment. So all these things are happening between LLM and environment. Nothing is affecting the user at all. It is all abstracted to the user. So it's happening between LLMs and environment. And then finally it, the task gets completed. And then finally the result is displayed to the user. So this is a very simple, but most practical interface workflow of how an agentic coding environment should look or something like a cursor should look. This is what I believe is agent. If you have got some more time, I would strongly encourage you to go read about baby AGI. This is one of the workflows that completely shows how agents can be chaotic at the same time work with the different system. Like there could be a memory element, there could be an execution element, there could be a step one, step two planning elements and things are happening again and again. There could be a loop and finally things are getting finished. So I would strongly encourage you to go read about baby AJ, but otherwise let me know what you think about this very short video about agents. If you want me to expand on this series, I'm happy to do more about agents and then implement agents in probably something like Pydantic AI. See you in another video. Happy prompting.